Kumusta kayo lahat? Welcome to Pinoy Bounce. I'm your host for tonight, Marky Mark. And in this episode, there's nothing much going on with the NBA. But we get the chance to talk about my favorite part of sports cards collecting and digital moments, which is Top Shot. And in this episode, we got a full segment dedicated to one of my friends who I met through Twitter, who's collecting one of the most unique set in Top Shot, which is the Totem Pack. They call themselves the Wolf Packs. So check those episodes out. His name is Chris, and we're going to talk about his Top Shot journey as well as his collection and the most unique set, and the most talked about set, almost controversial, but it's a really fun set, the Totem Pack, so check this episode out. Welcome to our show, how are you feeling today? Oh, feeling great, yeah, thanks for having me on, I appreciate it. Great to have a chance to talk about throwdowns and, and about Top Shot in general. Really happy. We're definitely gonna talk about it, but before we get into that part, I wanna get to know a little bit of you and your Top Shot journey before uh, you became the wall, a part of the Wall Pack. Uh, tell sure. me about your story, how did you get started with Top Shot? Who introduced you to it? How did you find out about it? Yeah, I uh, I found about it. I found out on Twitter a guy I follow who's into fantasy sports and also Bitcoin. I wasn't really into Bitcoin, but you know, fantasy sports followed him for that. And he was tweeting about Top Shot. His name was Davis Maddock, and yeah. he was uh, talking about buying Lou Dort, you know, Top Shot moments for a hundred dollars. I'm like, well, that seems really odd. I don't know. And yeah. it kind of stuck in my head. A few days later, I looked at it, opened up an account, and kind of was off and running. Um, I think the first moment I bought was uh, Jeremy Grant, 15,000. I'm a Piston fan. I was kind of from way back with the bad boys, Isaiah Thomas. And so um, yeah. bought that as a first moment and was kind of hooked after that. That's awesome. Like, what was your first impression when you kind of saw, hey, like, you know, is there any like, because I've noticed that there's always like that barrier to entry with, with Top Shot and how it felt like, hey, it's just another video. What? Um, what made you like felt like, hey, this is something, or this is something I, you know, that felt like it's normal to kind of get into and and get and start collecting. Yeah, I mean, I I, I like sports cards. I collected as a kid, and I like markets and just kind of how they function. And so it's just kind of a good blend of that. Once I got in, I got in late January, so prices hadn't gone completely crazy, but they still seemed really high. But once I started, you know, buying and selling some, kind of flipping, you know, at first anyway. Yeah. Uh, it got pretty addictive and it was just a lot of fun, really. And I think yeah. as I went, I developed just a lot more of a love for the platform and the community, you know, on Twitter and, uh, and just collecting. I got involved in challenges and, and things like that and finding moments that... So it really started, rather than just wanting to find things I could sell or whatever, I, you know, collection I could keep and things I'd never sell over time. <laughs> That's the, the awesome. Moment. Like, what was the first yeah. pack that you opened? Like... Um... Because I know it, it kind of got harder and harder to get a pack later on. Right. But I, I got in on some base set packs when they were still like you clicked on them and hoped you'd get one before they had the cues. Yeah. I only got two or three that way. But I remember I got a Durant 15K moment in my first pack. So that was wow. pretty fun. That's yeah. awesome. What was the first challenge that you end up doing? And like, what was, what was that like? Because I know we've all had that memorable challenge that we did the very first one. <laughs> Yeah, it was the seeing stars, Kevin Durant. So. Oh wow, that's awesome! Yeah, <laughs> I did I, the uh, I did the LeBron, so we all went okay, through that. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did the Durant first, and then I wasn't going to do either one because they got yeah. so expensive, and they kind of came down, and I decided to 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 do it, and just really had fun with it. So. Yeah, man, like I was in the Durant. Um, I I thought of doing Durant when it started going down, and mm -hmm. um, but I already ha it was weird because. The way they set up the uh, the seeing stars, you know, they had that first week when they started announcing it. I knew yeah. like I I wasn't like, hey, I have to focus on like the the player, and I felt like LeBron had a more pool in the market, so I focused on collecting the the LeBron moments before, and and just like, hey, I'm just gonna if if it comes out later, maybe I'll get the uh, collector the rest of the set, but I'm just gonna do one challenge. So I did the the um, the, the LeBron so early in. Like a week during the week of they were doing the um this the Durant and it, right. you had twenty three days or something to complete the Durant challenge. I think that was like one of the longest challenges. Like yeah, I it started. Was so long. It was right. so long, right? And and then what happened was with the LeBron challenge, it didn't even come right after the Durant. It literally like they had the All Star set and then uh, the two challenges for the All Star and then the LeBron. So it's right. like oh like I should I could have held. <laughs> I could have like sold off my LeBron moments and then like do the other challenge, then do the LeBron after. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, I was like, hey, like you know, I have I, I bought them at good uh, cereals, like because I was looking to hold them, right? So that's kind of the uh, 
the notion with it. <laughs> um, out of your experience with, with Top Shot, like, my, what was your first impression of it? Like, uh, in terms of like, the user experience, the interface, the moments, like, what were some of your initial thoughts uh, going into the, uh, the, almost like the universe of Top Shot? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was just really impressed with it compared to just a physical cardboard basketball card. There's so much more going on with the highlights and the shape of it and the way that you can just instantly find any moment you want and buy. And you don't have to go to a store or, or find another person willing to trade you or find eBay or whatever. You could just click on the moment you want and buy it. And I think that was just great. It's really good for a, for a collector and someone who wants to you know, be able to just have their favorite moment or even just look at other people's moments. You know, it's, I like to go and browse some of the big collections out there and just see what's out there and, you know, dream about that too. And you can That's do awesome. that on Top Shot. You know? Have you interacted with some of the, uh, the early OGs um, in the Top Shot uh, yeah. space? Yeah, and the ones that I'm most familiar with are, people, are ones who actually joined the Wolfpack and we, we chat with them all the time. Um, Steve, one of the top 10 collectors and then Alxo is in it. Mm. So, and then that's Library awesome. yeah. is, is also there. So also yeah. there. Wow. That's awesome. That's all the yeah. like three OGs right there. I mean, uh, actually Steve is, uh, he's from Canada from, um, right, he's yeah. in, from one of the cities here. I've actually spoken to him. So, because I wanted to get, um, a, a moment that he had. So I asked mm -hmm. him cause I, I, for me, like, you know, buying top shot moments is great, but like, I like buying from somebody that like, Hey, like I know, or like, Hey, like I know we had some sort of connection, or like we met. So I messaged him about a um, uh, what moment that I, I bought my Fred Van Fleet moment from him. So I bought his Top Shot debut of uh, I saw that he had like a couple or so. So I mm -hmm. asked him, Hey, like um, I have this much. I'm looking to purchase a uh, uh, Fred Van Fleet Top Shot debut. I was wondering if you'd like to do a deal for it. And he like literally immediately just like yeah, uh, you know, because he is also a Raptors fan. So he told him that hey, I'm a Raptors fan too. I'm trying to collect um, the Top Shot debuts of them. Like, I'm only missing uh, uh, Fred Van Fleet. And he immediately just like, yep, let me know. Um, uh, watch out for it. Just snipe it before it all goes. Like, so that's yep. kind of like, and that was Steve. And he was a really great, um, uh, he was a really great sport about it. So then because of him, I have now a Fred Van Fleet moment that, uh, uh, which was good. Like, because uh, I'd rather buy from an OG that's actually, you know, not willing to under, like most of his stuff he didn't put for sale. It's only like when you approach him to actually, and only when he needs to like do a challenge or something, that's something that he would sell. So yeah, he 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 loved he loves Top Shot. He's such a genuine guy, and it's been yeah. fun interacting with him. He'll sell moments, but it's almost always with a, with a plan in mind mm -hmm. to you know to do a challenge or to get something else that he really wants. He's just really he's those are the, yeah, I, I agree. Like those are the kind of OGs that I think him and then, um, Al, uh, Alexo, like both of them, I always like have interacted with. Not much with Liberary because I um, haven't really spoken, but those two are so, so genuine. Like I'd rather buy, like mm -hmm. if I were to buy Series 1 moments, I would usually contact them first before I do, just so that, hey, like, hey, if you're selling one, let me know, right? Because usually they will use it to find back and do challenges. That's what I've seen yeah. them do. <laughs> yeah, and hey, if you buy one from them, you kind of get their uh, digital autograph on the moment. We had exactly. Someone, someone bought a Jalen Brown from Steve just, I think just last night that was in our group and... Uh, and it kind of a little bonus, you know, just to have one that he had. He bought it for like two, a Jalen Brown debut. He bought for two dollars sometime last fall. If you can believe wow. that. Wow, <laughs> that's insane, <laughs> it's just a, man! Like, top shot history on the moment. Yeah, on the it's insane with pro like with like with projects like these. Like it it accelerates so fast that you like it's mm -hmm. almost like you know how people are trying to time the bottom of top shot right now. Like it's difficult to time it. Like you won't know when is actually the bottom. Like you like almost just like have like constantly just purchasing like the ones that you want to collect because who would have known that it started turning around so fast like people thought like yeah. summer was going to be boring and nobody's going to be buying anything because like hey like look at now right <laughs> yeah right yeah everyone's it's just it always does the opposite of what you expect it seems like that's I part agree. of the fun yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome man. well you know thanks for sharing your story uh, uh chris this is awesome but we still have more to go because we're going to have your collection. So we ran out of our segment too. But for our audiences out there, stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to go through Chris's favorite collection and talk a little bit about his wall pack and what about the throwdown set and what makes it special, right? This is the fun part that we're going to get to know what makes the throwdown set special and makes the community of it so strong. So stay tuned, guys.